Hi, I'm Dan Herbert, course developer and instructor at Point Blank. These tutorial videos give you a flavour of what you can expect on our brand new Complete Native Instruments course. If you want to learn how to comprehensively develop your music production techniques using Native Instruments world-renowned sound libraries, you can find out more about this course plus many more that we offer in London, Los Angeles and online at www.pointblanklondon.com. In this video we're going to take a look at how to create a basic subtractive synth using blocks. So obviously we need to be in edit mode. If you're not in edit mode then you won't see the library. So click on library and we've got a choice between core, primary and reactor blocks. We're going to be looking at primary later on the lesson. But for now let's double click on reactor blocks. And to start with, I'm going to choose a default ensemble. So you've probably only got blocks new. Let's double click on that one and what this will do is we'll open up the ensemble and it's got three blocks it's got util clock which is useful when it comes to sequences we've got util note in and this will allow us to get MIDI information into reactor and then we've got util level stereo which gives us a stereo output so we can adjust the level of our synth so now what I want to do is to add the basic building blocks of a subtractive synthesizer. So I'm just going to use bento box here. So click on oscillator, drag and drop that across. Adds in the oscillator. Then let's add a filter. So we can drag either directly into the structure view or into the panel view. And the last section is an amp section. So amp VCA. The other way to add is just literally double click the only problem with that is then we have to rearrange it in both windows and put it where you want it to be. So to connect these up, it's really quite easy. We connect the audio out from the oscillator to the audio in of the filter, the audio out of this filter to the audio in of the VCA, and then from the out of that VCA to the stereo fader. So this is just purely a mono synth, so we connect it up to both inlets there. The other thing which would be useful for a subtractive synth is an envelope. So I'm just going to click there and drag and drop this envelope over here. So the out of the envelope is going to go into the VCA mod A inlet. That is our basic subtractive synthesizer. What I need to do now is to connect up the MIDI input from my keyboard into this patch. So pitch to pitch and then gate which is basically like velocity, I'm going to connect into the ADSR. Okay, you'll also notice we've got a pitch inlet on our filter, so we might as well connect that up as well. Excellent, so if I play a note on my keyboard, we get no sound out. And the reason for that is I haven't set it up yet. If I play a note again and adjust the VCA, so the VCA, voltage controlled amplifier, controls the volume. What I want to happen is for the envelope to modulate the control. So here's the ADSR. Now, what can be quite useful here is if we actually name this AMP ADSR, you can see it's named up here. It's connected into Mod A Inlet. And if I come up to the VCA and click on where it says A here, you'll notice you then get this kind of transparent slider. And I'm gonna click on that and drag all the way up to the top. As soon as I do that, you get this little triangle here. So if I now play a note, on the keyboard, you can see how it's modulating the actual control. So that's all a bit loud, let me just turn this down. And now come over to the waveform, and we can basically go through a whole range of different waveforms. There's a sawtooth wave. If I want to change the pitch of that, come to this control here, and that shifts it up or down in terms of semitones or for detuning effects. Then we can set it back to zero. What you also find, you can double click on a parameter and that should set it back to its default setting. So the output from this oscillator routes through the filter. So we've got cutoff and then we've got resonance. The moment it's defaulting to a low pass filter. If you click on this filter icon, Band pass, and again, high pass filter. Let's switch that back to low pass. And then next we've got the amp envelope. So let's increase the attack time. 
So the sound now fades in, or if I increase the release, and then let go of the note, the note sustains on slightly. What we could also do here is have a filter envelope. So let's just duplicate the amp ADSR. So just Command D is the shortcut. And then I'm going to connect the out of this into the mod A inlet of the filter. And let's label this. So just double click there, delete amp, type in filter. And it could be useful just to put it before. Then to modulate the cutoff, you'll need to click on A and then turn up the mod amount. Let me just reset the settings here. So I want a fast attack, and let's close the filter straight away. So I'll bring the sustain down, and I just want to tighten up that release time on the amp envelope now. There we go. So we've now got an extra level of control here where we're using a separate envelope to control the cutoff of the filter. So in this video, we're gonna create a basic FM synth. First thing I'm gonna do, click on edit, come to library, react to blocks, and let's do blocks new, and open up the reactor blocks folder, and we're gonna to go to bento box again. So let's set up our basic oscillator patch. So there's our oscillator, there's the amp section. Let's move this over here to give us a bit more space. And then we'll also need an envelope. Into there, and it's always sensible just to make sure things are nice and tidy as we're doing this. So the out of our envelope will go into the VCA, so that's gonna be our amp ADSR. And then we can connect it up, so the pitch from the note in, it's gonna to go to pitch and the gate is gonna be used to trigger the envelope. Then just need to set up our mod in and then it's just turn down the volume. So that's obviously what we've created previously. To create the FM part, we're gonna actually add another oscillator and another ADSR. Okay, so let's drag in oscillator here. And I'm gonna name this the Modulator oscillator or mod osc for now and another envelope as well drop that in and again let's name this mod amount ADSR and I'm just gonna shift that back slightly and drag this one here. There we go. Right, so to connect this up, the mod oscillator is gonna go into the FM inlet here, so we get FM synthesis, okay? Because this is gonna modulate the actual frequency of this main oscillator. I also need to connect up the pitch from the note in into the pitch inlet, so it'll do key tracking. And then in terms of the mod amount envelope, I'm gonna trigger that from the gate source and go from the out of that to the mod A inlet of the oscillator. Okay, so really we should call this carrier OSC. You'll remember from when we looked at FM previously, we've got a modulator and a carrier. So if I play a note now, it's exactly the same. So what I need to do to create some form of frequency modulation is to turn up this control. And we can hear it affecting the sound. What sometimes can be quite useful when you're synthesizing sounds is to drop in something like an oscilloscope. So within the utility folder, drop in scope and then just connect it up from the output. And what we can do to zoom in essentially is just drop down this value here. Good. So now when I increase this FM control, Hey, we get some quite twisted sounds. Now, that sounds fairly unconventional in terms of FM, and there's actually three different modes. There's exponential, linear, and linear through zero. This one here is the most predictable. So as I increase that, there we go. We'll get our FM textures. We've created this mod amount envelope, so let's use that. I'm gonna click on the button A here, and 
going to turn up the modulation amount. So this envelope is coming into mod A on the carrier OSC. So I've enabled that and then turned up the fader here. So this is essentially like our modulation amount control. So it's basically how much we want the mod amount ADSR to affect the frequency modulation. And what we can do now is obviously just then just adjust this. So if we want to uh, a kind of nice slow attack, let me play a bit low down on the keyboard. <laughs> and it just drops down a bit. So we're getting a nice kind of warping effect there. And as you remember, depending on the relationship between the pitch of the modulator and the carrier is what type of sound will be created. So I could go down the octave. Or I could go up the octave for something more like a square wave type of texture. If I want a kind of more plucky sound, then let's go for a fast attack on the mod envelope and fast decay and pull the sustain down. So there we go, there's our basic FM synth. The key here is we have a second oscillator which routes into the FM inlet, and we've also added an ADSR. What we could then do is actually copy these again and then modulate the modulator, okay, and set up a more complex FM algorithm. Remember that you can learn many more music production techniques on the courses we offer at Point Blank in London, Los Angeles, and online. Find out more at pointblanklondon.com. Thank you.